How's it going everyone? My name is Joe and welcome to Film Focused. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions on what it is I use to develop black and white film. So I decided to make this video basically an update to the video I made last year on all the chemicals and whatnot that I use for my process. I will leave links in the description for all the stuff that I use just in case you guys want to check it out, maybe try it out if you're looking for something different. Um, and just kind of give you my opinion on what it is I use and how I use it and why I use it. So uh, let's get started. First things first, the development tanks that I use are the Patterson tanks. Those are pretty much like an industry standard. They're really high quality plastic. Um, they last forever. They're really easy to find and they're pretty affordable. They come in a lot of sizes if you shoot different formats from 35 all the way to large format. Um, I personally I shoot a lot of 35 and medium format, so I have the single uh, reel tank, I have two double reel tanks, I have a triple reel and a five reel tank, and I use all of those pretty regularly depending on what it is I'm shooting at the time. It's great if you like to shoot color and black and white because you always have more than one option um, you know, to load film into, which is really nice. I would, um, if you are in the market for those, I would pay attention to what the description says when you're buying it because sometimes they sell just the tank and no film reels. So if you're looking and you think you might get a good deal, um, make sure it says whether or not it comes with or without the reels because that would be a bummer to like order something, get this great deal and figure out you don't have anything to actually hold your film in. Um, but yeah, those are great. Um, on to developer. Uh, I use Kodak D76. It's what I used when I was in art school, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, and it's super cheap. That's really the main reason why I use it. It's effective. It does a really great job on a whole bunch of different types of films. It's good for pushing and pulling film. Um, however, developers usually come in either a powder or a liquid concentrate. And D76 is a powder. And powders are... They're a bit more difficult to work with, in my opinion, especially when it comes to like mixing the chemicals. Um, it's slightly more dangerous, I would say, just because the powder can kind of blow up and either get into your eyes or you can breathe it in a little bit easier than liquids. I think the liquids are a bit easier to control. However, D76 is like $8 for a gallon of solution, which is really, really good. So if you're into like a minimalist dark room and you're trying to save money, D76 is a great developer. Um, I am thinking about switching over to Ilford developers because they do liquid concentrates. They're DDX, I believe, and HC110, or maybe it's just HC. Those are both um, really well regarded in the photo community. I have yet to try them, and if I do end up switching over, I'll let you guys know. But as of right now, I'm using D76. Um, another con of using a powdered developer like D76 is because it's a gallon of solution. If you just make your solution and you let it sit for like six months, it'll be totally fine because it hasn't come in contact with oxygen. But the more you use your developer, the more oxygen is actually coming in contact with that solution and it's going to expire faster. So that's a little bit of a downside. So like it's a race against the clock once you start developing film. Whereas with the liquid concentrates, similar to like DDX and HC110, um, you have a bottle similar to this. This is not developer, but, um, and then you can individually mix a solution based on how diluted you want it to be and how much film you're developing at that time. So the concentrates tend to last a little bit longer and you can be a bit more precise with how much you're using per batch, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, all right, on to stop bath. I don't use a dedicated or a traditional stop bath. I just use water. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, the main reason that a stop bath exists is to literally stop the developer from coming in contact with the film. So water, if you rinse your film thoroughly for maybe like a minute, some good agitation in there, you're going to stop the developer from touching your film. That's the biggest thing. Now, some fixers, they do require you to use a stop bath, but the one that I use does not. So I don't see myself ever buying stop bath. It really isn't a necessary thing to have, in my opinion. Um, so the, the fixer that I use 
is Photographer's Formulary TF4. Um, I think it's a pretty popular one. It was highly recommended from the forums that I was looking in when I started doing my own home development, and I've been using it for over four years now, and I love it. Um, similar to uh, Kodak D76, it's very affordable. It's about $13 or $15 for a liter of the concentrate that you mix into a full gallon of solution. So um, not only does it do a great job and it's super affordable, but it lasts forever. Like it, it, it could in theory last me two bottles of developer. However, just to be on the safe side, I mix a new batch of fixer whenever I mix a new batch of developer. It just, I think it's a smarter way to do things. You know that everything's fresh. You have a date that's, um, you know, the same for both of your chemicals. So it's just easier to track, um, safer. You know, your film is going to turn out the way you want it to. Um, I know that there are some other companies that make good fixers as well, but the biggest thing for me is getting something that's affordable and effective and photographer's formulary does exactly that. Um, let's see what else. Okay. So I've actually added two things into my development process that I had not been using in the past. And those two things are what I have right here. So the first is what I use after my fixer and or after the fixer and the wash. And that is Kodak PhotoFlow 200. And um, I think 200 just stands for the potency of the actual photo flow solution. And there are other companies that make this stuff as well. It's basically just like a soapy wetting agent that helps clean the film and helps it dry and without any water spots on it. Because I've been running into an issue of getting a lot of water spots on my black and white film, which is really annoying because then that's extra time you have to work um, in post-production. So finally gave in and bought one of these bottles. Now, Ilford makes a really good one, but it's like twice as expensive. This is a 16 ounce bottle and I got it for $8 on B&H. That's 473 milliliters of solution. So if you don't know how PhotoFlow works, it's a super high concentrate soapy wetting agent and you mix it with, di um, not diluted, you mix it with distilled water at the end of your development and you kind of let it, the film sit in there for like a minute and then you squeegee the film dry, and then you let it hang dry. And for this solution, you're only using one milliliter of photo flow per roll of film. So because there's 473 milliliters in here, that's 473 rolls of film that this will clean for you, or photo flow for you. So that's a really, really good deal. Um, this stuff never really goes bad, and if it does, it's only another $8 to buy it. So it's a worthy investment, in my opinion. The last thing on this list is probably the most controversial, and that is my new film squeegee. I've been using this for uh, two or three months now, and I know in my previous video I said to stay away from squeegees or just to not buy them because they're not necessary, and in truth they really are not necessary. However, I've definitely been converted, if you will, into using a film squeegee. Now, there are some negatives or cons or potential issues that go into, you know, using a film squeegee. And the main one being that there is more potential of the squeegee scratching or ruining your film. Um, the only way that really happens is if you, one, don't take care of your squeegee, and two, if you don't properly prepare the squeegee to come in contact with your film. So you can see here, this is in the original box that it came in, or plastic container, whatever you want to call it. And I always keep it in here to make sure that no dust or dirt gets onto the squeegee. Secondly, before I even start developing my film, I will take a developing tank that I'm not using and fill that with warm water. And I will soak the squeegee for at least 30 minutes in warm water before using it. What that does is it softens the rubber because it's, it's nice and porous, kind of like our skin. And it will also put a small like film or layer of water over top of the rubber pieces that are on the squeegee. And that will help protect the film from getting any scratches on it. So far, I've developed, God, I can't tell you how many rolls of film with this. And I've not had a single scratch on any of my film. So 
as long as you take care of it, you buy a decently priced one. I think this is the dot line um, rubber squeegee. I'll put the link in the description. It was only like $15. Like, don't go super cheap on a squeegee. You want to be paying anywhere between like $15 and $30 for a squeegee. That way you know it's it's of, you know, good value and it's not going to end up just scratching your film as long as you, like I said, take care of it. Um, I guess one other thing to talk about would be like hanging clips. Um, I dry my film in my shower just hanging from my um, like curtain rod. And I have some laundry clips that I use for like the top clip. I don't have the, I should have grabbed them for the video. Um, and those are really nice. I'm sure you can buy those at like Target or Ikea or something. If I can find them, I will leave a link in the description below. And then I was also gifted like traditional darkroom um, film clips that I'm not sure where to buy them. I'm sure they would be on B&H. Similarly, I'll leave a link down there or maybe it's on the screen right now um, if I'm doing like a screen grab from B&H. Um, but those are really good to have because it helps, uh, put a slight amount of weight at the bottom of the film to make sure that all the water is draining properly and that when the film dries, it doesn't curl up on you. So, um, yeah, that is about it. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. Um, I hope you got something from it. I hope it was entertaining and informative. If you guys have anything different that you do or any chemicals that you think I should try, or test out, let me know in the comment section, you know, what's your favorite chemicals that you use. Um, if I missed anything or something like that, let me know. Uh, let's get a conversation started. And, you know, the whole point of this channel is to help the, the photo community, whether you're experienced or new, um, to get better and to try new things and to, you know, help everyone enjoy photography more. So um, let's, let's do that. Uh, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Um, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. That really helps out. And, uh, and yeah, so thank you guys for watching the video. I will see you next time. Have a great rest of the day wherever you are.